Hello, my name is Larry Poncho Brown, and we're at the James E. Lewis Museum, where we have been um, trying to do a celebration called Contemporaries, where it's our 10th year celebrating the Visual Artists Series here at Morgan. Uh, the program was developed for professional artists to come into Morgan State and to lend their expertise, their philosophy, and some of their techniques to the students to offer them an opportunity to figure out how to craft their art careers. The guests for today's panel discussion is Paul Goodnight, Charles Bibbs, Phyllis Stevens, and Charlie Palmer. So with that, we're going to turn over to our moderator and just talk about some of the issues that are important to us from an artist's perspective. I think that it's very important to us that we reach out um, to the younger artists that uh, are starting in this career. And with all of the cuts that are going on in America, starting as Pancho had said to me earlier in middle school and high school, how do we, and I'm directing this to uh, anyone on this panel, how do we as, as established artists reach out into the community and help these people bring art back into um, their own mainstream? Paul, good night. <laughs> Anyone on the panel is Paul Goodnight. <laughs> That's someone on the panel. Okay. Um, it, it's it's obviously very very important. I wish that we had a program like we had when I was coming up, like the NCA. Mm -hmm. That way, uh, you would hear the voice of art educators, art uh, artists in the field. Uh, art supporters, uh, people who are in the business of art, uh, the whole gamut. What does this really do for us? And what do, do we do for the community? So what is art anyway? Is it the substance of our existence? Or is it the substance of many other people? How do you pay for that substance? What does substance mean? It means to sustain us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. This sustains us, and it gives us a reason for living. That's why I do it. it I didn't choose art. Art obviously chose me. Mm -hmm. And that became my voice. So, um, And if that became a voice for me, it has to become a voice for someone else mm -hmm. besides me. And all we do is we do what we do, but we can't do it selfishly. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to say, if this is going to extend itself, it's got to mm -hmm. extend itself to people who are younger than me who might aspire not to be a basketball player or a mm -hmm. singer or a dancer or whatever else is there, they're being mm -hmm. shepherded to us mm -hmm. through the media. But there's mm -hmm. one person that might say, mm -hmm. I want to be an artist. Yeah. I didn't have that mm -hmm. um, when I was younger. I just know I liked doing it. Uh, but as I got older, I was fortunate enough to see a cadre of artists from a whole bunch of places. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said the NCA, NCA was mm -hmm. really instrumental in helping mm -hmm. me um, to find mm -hmm. what art is. I didn't know what art was. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I still don't know what the word means. Um, but I know what I have to do is that, that I, you know, because it's being shuffled around so much. Mm -hmm. You know, you hear the word... Mm -hmm. Um, oh, that's so artistic. And that's, I, I look at some art, and I don't think it's artistic. I just mm -hmm. think it's stuff on the wall. <laughs> and then I look at other artists, and I'm, in, I'm amazed by it. Mm -hmm. But it's more subjective than objective. Mm -hmm. And when you speak to an audience that appreciates what you do, that sustains them. Mm -hmm. It sustains us by doing it. It's the substance of our existence, to tell you the absolute well, truth. So, Charles, tell me, um, what do you think that we can do as contemporary artists to mentor okay. kids, to bring them into? Okay. Well, I don't think we necessarily have to convince the kids. Mm -hmm. uh, the institutions are already established that art is necessary in the curriculum. Mm -hmm. and in various states and local municipalities, they've already deemed it not necessary, so they've... they've uh, exit those programs from the school institution. So, so the kids are, all, are always there. I mean, they're, they're musicians, poets. I mean, they're eagerly waiting and ready. But I think it's the institutions that we have to convince. We have to re, 
institute the necessity for art and uh, our educational programs. Um, and one way we can do that is with forums. In other words, we have to go to the uh, local um, committee meetings, uh, go to the school boards. I think we need to go to even uh, the council meetings yeah. in, your, in your local areas mm -hmm. and have a, not just go with one artist, but a, a contingent mm -hmm. of artists. Mm -hmm. Or, in other words, knock the doors down if you have to, and and tell them who are the kids that are the troublemakers in the school. Nine out of ten times, in my experience, they're artists. They're kids that just don't have. They're bored at school because they don't have that that platform that they used to have. They don't have that way of expressing themselves. And I think, as matter of fact, I think it's very important for the schools to have that balance. But I was telling Paul later earlier today is that we're in jeopardy of creating a whole generation of artistic illiterates, uh, just kids with bad taste or adults with bad taste. <laughs> uh, can I say something? Uh, um, that I know I don't want to capitalize on this, but I, I was just thinking when he was talking, I was saying, could you imagine a world without art, without mm. music, Ooh. without dance, mm -hmm. without the written word, without poetry, without the visuals. Imagine that. Just imagine how sterile that world would be, mm -hmm. how uncreative this world would be, how unimaginative this mm -hmm. world would be. Mm -hmm. The arts is as necessary as anything else. Yeah. Yeah. And so I just want to, to visualize something that has no, no artistic uh, platform at all. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't mm -hmm. imagine it. I yeah. can't imagine it. I think this whole thing came out of just purely laziness. Not, not on the kids' part, not on the artists' parts, but like I said, it's the institutions again. They're, they would have been pressured for years to increase the grade point average of the kids. And that was, that was the justification to continue funding education and, and so on. And when we started deteriorating worldwide, as far as grade point averages, they systematically looked at the curriculum and says, the things that are not necessary, let's eliminate it. Mm -hmm. Woodshop, um, uh, music, electronics, music, music art. Mm -hmm. art was totally taken off the Home curriculum. Economics. So mm -hmm. in a sense, they achieved what they wanted. But I, like I said, I, you know, I think we created a problem by not by exiting the the art curriculums from the schools because you had a lot of the discipline problems has increased yeah. mm -hmm. well substantially that's 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 also true that when you take something away from it they find other ways to put it that's on it. Mm -hmm. I mean like graffiti mm -hmm. is on the upswing is, is mm -hmm. it, yes. well remember when they took the art art away they they started painting the trains they started mm -hmm. painting walls they started to, they they mm -hmm. demonstrated that there was a need for some kind of creative outlet mm -hmm. even if it was destructive mm -hmm. they had to do it so there are people that would do it and like Charles was talking about that um, people who don't have an outlet have a frustration Yes. And that frustration, generally, yes. it can be constructive or destructive, mm -hmm. but it will come out some ways that people will appreciate it or they'll just say, this is annoying, but it'll come out. Mm -hmm. It's not going to, yeah. nobody can hold now, it. The Pop biggest problem I see happening mm -hmm. is that, I know we're on the right path, mm -hmm. but if you can imagine that same world where you have no nurturing in middle school with art, mm -hmm. no nurturing in, in high school level, and then suddenly you're launched to college with the aspiration of learning art, but you've had almost eight years of dormancy. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening now. We're beginning to witness students that are coming into a college setting who d have missed those developmental years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, but they want to actively compete with yeah. other students mm -hmm. that may have had that. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I thought this program and programs like this where you bring the artists in and they talk to the students, uh, it offers another outlet rather than allowing that system, trying to break that system. Um, all of the art programs have been merged into computer labs, or you have art programs that have been merged with printing programs. 
And so now you got graphic arts, no drawing, no painting. And so that trend is beginning to gain momentum. And um, it's, it's, a, it's a harrowing thought that after a while, they're not going to have an outlet for the arts, the visual arts. Mm -hmm. Let me, I want to talk about two different things. One was the idea of the laziness. I think uh, in the curriculum overall, I think it has more to do with ignorance mm -hmm. and not realizing how important there is definitely a relevance to art. And that if there was no art, there would be no anything, you know, because mm -hmm. everything when it comes to creativity, whether it's an automobile mm -hmm. or signpost, mm -hmm. has been designed or created first. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think that that's part of it is not understanding the relevance or importance of it. But the other thing I think is, is the process of creating art mm -hmm. is solitary. And so until we as artists, like, build a unified front, and start to address those politicians and those the people that are part of the board, school mm -hmm. board, mm -hmm. and let them know just how important it is to students' exposure to the importance of art, then it's easy that it's going to go away across the board all over the country. Mm -hmm. And I think if, an unfortunate thing is it's happening probably more here in the United States than it's happening anywhere else because there's always been a lack of appreciation for the arts, yeah. you know, but I think we have to kind of get together and and show a unified front and mm -hmm. let people know that. And first of all, you can you can make a living at it, but more important than that, it's very important. And it's very relevant to what's going on in our society, because like I think John F. Kennedy was the one who said that the last voice of humanity is art. Yes, you know, poetry, music, mm -hmm. you know, painting, mm -hmm. creating. Mm -hmm. And so, if you e even if you want to know, like, if we look at this fifty years from now, what was going on at that time? 50 years, it's like you look at the arts mm -hmm. and what was being written, what was being performed, what was being created at that point. Mm -hmm. And if people fail to see that relevance now, then we can lose something <laughs> that will forever, like, you know, damage mm -hmm. the history of the United States or the world. Yeah. Yeah, I, I firmly believe in evolution. I don't think the arts are going anywhere. Mm -hmm. We're going to still be drawing. You mm -hmm. might not have a, a functional uh, umbrella to do it under. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, we're all getting caught up in the technology versus the traditional mm -hmm. arts, and there's a big battle right now on which one's going to win over. And, mm -hmm. and then we talk about a generational shift where most of us came through those traditional programs, and now they're doing um, more digital and a more computerized um, uh, kind of a uh, uh, just background with everything now. Mm -hmm. So uh, the children are wired totally different now than we were. Mm -hmm. Well, they have 10 times the distractions than we did. Mm -hmm. They have uh, media coming from every direction we didn't. Uh, it was much easier for us to isolate, and it's very, very difficult for them to isolate with all of the distractions that they have these days. They process information 20 times faster than we did, but they don't know what to do with it. It's so mm -hmm. much information. is virtually on overload. They have a false sense of their creative abilities because mm -hmm. of the technology. Mm -hmm. It makes things look like mm -hmm. they can do it. Yeah. But when we look at it, we can dissect it and tell what they can't do. Mm -hmm. you know? So my thing is that we can talk about preserving one thing mm -hmm. and this entity that's out there, but mm -hmm. that's not really finding the answer. The answer is how do you use that media to help balance out this battle? Because right now the battle is, is moving at a pace that's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. It's affecting our business. When we started this business in the early 80s, printing technology had not matured to the state that it is today. Mm -hmm. We could not afford to do certain things in the 80s. Mm -hmm. But towards the, the, the 82, 83, 84, color technology kind of came down to where old black and white technology used to be. Mm -hmm. So we could afford to do it. It changed everything. Mm -hmm. Now, all of a sudden, 2012... Machines are running all day, 24-7, art, whatever you want to think is coming through these presses, and we don't have people, a viable amount of people to, sit, to, to support the amount of paper that's being produced. So we could talk about the, the isms of art, mm -hmm. but it's a bigger picture. Now, technology is pushing this thing. Mm -hmm. Vocational education is also eroding in this country. 